In this lecture, we're going to work on learning how to solve linear equations. Um, just a quick reminder, the fact that it is linear means that our x's only have an exponent of 1. So the degree is 1. When our degree is 2, we call that quadratic. When the degree is 3, we call that cubic. Um, 4 actually is quartic, and we could go on and on. But today we're just dealing with linear, and actually everything we're going to talk about in here, you guys learned back in Algebra 1. So my goal is to isolate x. So if we look at number 1, we have 3 7 x plus 9 equals 15. So I need to think, how can I get x all by itself? And the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of that 9 by subtracting 9 from both sides. So I have 3 7 x equals 6. By the way, this step right here is not something that you need to write. I feel like we're at a level where a lot of you guys are comfortable doing this in your heads. You don't need to write every little step out. You definitely would need to have this step written out. But if you feel confident writing everything, then please go ahead and do that. So now I need to get x all by itself. So I need to think, how could I change this coefficient of 3 over 7 into a coefficient of just 1? And the way that I could do that is by multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 over 7. Students often confuse the terms reciprocal and opposite. Opposite means that something has the opposite sign. A reciprocal means we're taking a fraction and we're switching the numerator and the denominator. So we notice 3 is now in the denominator, 7 is up in the numerator. When we multiply those together, it just becomes x. And 6 times 7 over 3 is 42 over 3. And when we simplify that further, I end up getting 14. We should always simplify as much as we can. Now, even though I'm not requiring this of you, if I was doing a quiz or a test, we can make sure that this answer works by substituting it back in for x and making sure it makes a true statement. Number two brings a new challenge because we have n's on both sides, we have constants on both sides. Just a reminder that the term constant refers to these numbers that are not attached to a variable. So I'm actually going to do two things at once. I'm going to combine my n's and combine my constants at the same time. And there's a few different ways we could do that, and that's the nice thing about solving. There's not just one way. I personally like having uh, my n coefficient in this case, or my x coefficient, to be positive when possible. So I'm going to go ahead and make it so n is positive. So I'm subtracting 5 in from both sides and adding 9 to both sides. When I subtract the 5 in, these cancel out and I'm just left with 2 in. When I add 9, these cancel out and I am left with 20. Now I need to get n all by itself. So to get rid of that coefficient of 2, I'm going to divide by 2 because multiplication and division are inverses of each other. And I end up getting 10 is equal to n. Number 3 is a doozy just because this is the one that I see a lot of students mess up on. So I want you to pause the video and do this one on your own and then check back with me and double check your work. So I started by distributing the 4 and distributing the negative 2, and that's the place that often we mess up. So I end up with 12x minus 20 equals 2x minus 16 minus 6x. Now I'm going to combine my like terms on each side. So I have 12x minus 20 equals negative 4x minus 16. Now we're at a point where this problem is very similar to what we did in number 2. So I'm going to put my x's on one side and my constants on the other side. So I'm choosing to add 4x to both sides and add 20 to both sides, but if you wanted to get the x's on the right side of the equation and the constants on the left side of the equation, you would end up with the same exact answer in the end if you're doing all the steps correctly. So we end up with 16x equals 4, and I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 16. 
And I know that 16 does not go into 4 evenly. However, this is a fraction I can reduce, and it's important that we always reduce our answers. 4 goes into both the numerator and the denominator. So the best answer I could give here is 1 fourth. A side note at this point, um, in addition to always wanting to reduce our answers, um, we don't want to give our answers as mixed numbers. Um, often in geometry you guys use mixed numbers and it made sense when I'm finding a length of something to say two and a half feet instead of five over two feet. But when we're working in algebra with variables, it can get really confusing if I use two and a half as a coefficient as opposed to something like five over two. So we just want to make sure that we leave things in terms of fractions. Um, improper fractions are completely fine. The other thing that we do not want to do is give rounded values. Decimals are okay if they are exact. For example, in this case, one-fourth, I could also write as 0.25 because that is an exact answer. But if our answer, for example, had been something like one-third, 0.33 would not be a correct answer because that is rounded. So we need to make sure to leave things as exact as possible. And one feature that your calculator does um, is it can turn any decimal into a fraction if that decimal is a rational number. Remember, a rational number means we can write it as a fraction of integers. Um, so go ahead and watch the calculator video if you don't know how to do that. So on to number four, everyone's favorite, because we see lovely fractions. Um, there are multiple ways that we could go about doing this. However, if you're like me, I really don't like fractions that much. I would prefer to get rid of them right away. So when I'm trying to get rid of them, I'm going to multiply by what we call the LCD, which is the least common denominator. So that means we need to figure out what is the smallest number that 3, 4, and 6 are all, all go into, that 3, 4, and 6 are factors of. And in this case, that would be 12. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply every single term by 12. Just a reminder, with equations. With equations, we can do a lot of things. We can multiply by random numbers, we can add random numbers, but it is like a, a scale. It's a balance. If I do things to one side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the second side of the equation. So here, multiplying by 12 is fine, but it's imperative we multiply everything by 12. So when I distribute, I'm going to simplify things in my head, and I get 4x plus 3 equals 12x minus 2. I think we're okay for me to skip steps here. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, so I just end up with 8x, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides, so I end up with 5. To get my final answer, I need to divide both sides by 8 to get x by itself. And I cannot do anything else with 5 eighths. This is simplified. It does not reduce. It's my final answer. Number 5, we're going to start off by distributing 5 to everything on the left side here. So I'm going to get 5x minus 20 equals 5x plus 12. And something kind of strange happens now. When I try to get my x's on the same side, I would subtract 5x from both sides, and my x's cancel out, and I end up with something like negative 20 equals 12. Whenever our variables cancel out, we need to ask ourselves a question. Is this true? Is negative 20 equal to 12? And it's, you may have also like added 20 to both sides. Regardless, you're going to have some sort of equation with a number equal to a number and you're asking if it's true. In this case, no, it's not. So whenever we answer no, that means we have no solution. And the reason being, regardless of what value we substitute in for x, it's never going to make a true statement. On the other hand, and by the way, um, when we say no solution, the shorthand we use for that is something we call the null set. So it looks like a zero with a slash going diagonally through it. If 
I had something that said 12 equals 12, then yes, that would have been true, and our answer would have been all real numbers. This script R here, remember that represents the set of numbers that are real. So in this case, my answer is just going to be no solution. We're skipping number six because that's quadratic. It is not linear. So we're moving straight into a word problem. And I know for some of you, word problems are really easy. And for others of you, it can be a little bit tougher. So let's just read through this first and find the important information. So it says, a real estate broker's base salary is $18,000. I'm thinking that's going to be important. She earns a 4% commission on total sales. How much must she sell in order to earn $55,000 total? So when I'm writing out this equation, I know that $55,000 is the total amount of money she's trying to make. She gets paid 18 grand no matter what, that's her base salary. But we also need to add on her commission. So in order to figure out her commission, it is 4% her total sales. We need to remember that when we're dealing with percentages, that means that we move our decimal place point over two places. So it's going to be point zero four times x. And x here is representing the amount of total or the amount of sales um, that she is selling. So as soon as we have this written down, now it's a pretty basic equation. I think it's easier than any other one we did today. I'm going to start by isolating x, so I'm going to subtract 18,000 from both sides. So I'm going to end up with 37,000 equals 0.04x. Next, to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 0.04. I'm going to stick this in my calculator and I get 925000 equals x. Now if you gave me that as your answer, I would not give you full credit because you actually did not answer the question. What is x representing? Well, it's representing money, so she is selling $925,000 worth of property. So we need to go ahead and put a dollar sign in front of that. 